you're ready, we're back for escape and avoidance. All right, escape and avoidance, here we are, negative reinforcement, all right? Uh, that's what we're really talking about with regard to escape and avoidance is that, that uh, again, we're gonna strengthen a behavior, uh, but we're gonna do so by contingently uh, removing or avoiding a stimulus, all right? So the definition that we're gonna function with here uh, or work, work with in, in terms of this course is gonna be the increasing of a behavior uh, by the contingent removal of a stimulus. Uh, so again, the, the contingent is the part that it's a rule. So you, you have to do the behavior first. The behavior causes the removal of a stimulus. And there's two different ways to think about that removal of a stimulus. Uh, but, but we'll get into that in a second. Of course, that's the title. You can escape it or you can avoid it. Right? So th from a different perspective or from a more colloquial perspective here, the loss of a stimulus following a behavior can increase the frequency or occurrence of that behavior. And that is negative reinforcement. <clears throat> so again, negative does not mean bad. You gotta get, you, you don't wanna think of that. You don't wanna think negative is bad and positive is good. Negative is just the loss of something. So, you know, take a aspirin is the behavior, the loss, what, I, what do I lose as a result? My headache. Flip the light switch, right? What do I lose? I lose the light, right? So if I'm turning it off, okay? So I've got light in the room and I'm leaving for the day and I flip the switch and there you go. The, the light goes off. That negatively reinforces me flipping the light switch if I want the lights off, okay? Pretty straightforward. Uh, again, here's the contingent part. The stimulus must be present. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not the contingent part. I was misreading my slide. Uh, in order to deal with escape, right, the stimulus must be present. Okay? That's you have to have that first. So, in other words, think of the car. You know the you know the beep beep beep. You know that sort of thing when you haven't put on your seatbelt, right? So you get in the car, you start driving down the road, and it's beeping, and that stimulus is now present. So when you then connect your seatbelt, it is negatively reinforced by escaping that stimulus. So the, with regard to escape, you must already be experiencing that aversive stimulus. Um, another thing that I've thought of here or that I've experienced here with regard to escape has to do with, um, what do you say, uh, like if you're out in the cold or something like that, you've got your gloves on, you got all that stuff on, and you're still a little bit chilly, so what do you do? You take and open one of those little hand warmer things, and sure there's this positive you know, thing added that, that heat is actually added, but you're also escaping the cold. So you're escaping that cold feeling on your hands uh, or in your feet or wherever you're putting those little hand warmers or toe warmers or whatever they are, right? So you're escaping that. Uh, and, and that's going to negatively reinforce you using those particular pads in the future. But again, you have to be experiencing something in order to escape it. Um, it's a little different for the other side of negative reinforcement for the avoidance, for the avoidance examples.